that's all it is. You just brush it on. I like to go in one direction. Now, as this paint dries, and it's going to dry really fast here. Oh, I'll bet you when I'm done in a half an hour, I'll bet you this is dry, or at least it seems dry. But remember, this has got the uh, lime and earth pigments in it, so it dries a little bit differently than you may be used to with oil paints. And what I mean by that is it stretches. Uh, so I, although I'm going to cover every bit of this shelf, just due to the stretching process, I may have to go back and find a little spot that I missed and retouch it up. And that's kind of the beauty of this milk paint. Now this batch we just mixed, when I'm done with it, I'm going to put a little baggie over it and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Since it is protein based, you have to keep it refrigerated. And it will keep in the refrigerator probably two days. I think I've gone back after three or four and it's it's just solidified too much and you really can't use it. And as you can see, this is going pretty darn quick. Now you can get this, uh, let's talk about, I'll assume you've seen a lot of the fancier Victorian items that I'm doing on the website. And this particular shelf I picked because it's not fancy. This has got more of a country look to it, just for this video because I could kind of go through it pretty quickly. But if this particular shelf had a bunch of little fancy Victorian cutouts in it, I would be using a small brush to get in those little cutouts. And again, it's going to be thick and globby, and that's good, that's exactly what you're looking for. You want that authentic look. Oh, this is already setting up, and it is just gorgeous. When we're done with the video, I'll go ahead and take some close-up pictures of it at high res so that you can get a little better idea. Yeah, it's drying pretty fast. I mean, that's good. Alright, now what can you use this stuff? First of all, another thing, anything on the website that I make, I can go ahead and send it to you unfinished. So if you're a crafty type person and you want to do some of your own painting, you can just do it. Uh, I do do some milk painting on order, but then again it's one of those things where why should you pay somebody else for their time to do something you can do at your kitchen table and have a little bit of fun with it. And isn't that the whole purpose of a lot of this Victorian architecture? <clears throat> okay, now we're coming up to where I'm just about done painting the front side and the edges of this piece which is going to give me a problem. What am I going to do about the backside? Aha! And we will answer that question in just a moment. Because I tried to get all prepared for it. Now I made this just the perfect consistency. You might think it's too thick because you're just not used to dealing with paint that's this thick. Uh, we've all gotten accustomed to uh, what you get out of the hardware store. But you want it thick. If it's runny and it's going on like you would ordinarily see a paint, you didn't make it thick enough. Alright, now what I'm going to do, smooth it out just a little bit. Make sure all my, although you don't have to, but I like all my brush strokes to go in the same direction. Look for globs, but sometimes I leave globs, particularly in the corners, just because they're interesting and you want that country Victorian kind of look. Just a couple little sticks. I'm going to raise it up all very carefully up off of the newspaper here. Put a couple sticks down so that it doesn't dry and stick to the newspaper. That also gives me a way to kind of get in there. There we go. Alright, in just a moment we're going to go ahead and turn that over and complete the process. 
and we'll be back with a video in just a moment. We'll go ahead and let this dry and then continue. It's been about three hours since we painted the front. In the meantime, I turned it over and painted the back of the piece. And I'm going to go ahead and take some still photographs up close so you can get a more idea. Now, the dries, milk paint will dry just dead flat. Beautiful color and a wonderful effect. You may find that you want to put a little shine to it, particularly in a kitchen or something like that. And also putting on a little shine, a little lacquer, will bring out some of the detail in the paint as well, I found. And I do recommend one item. You know, this is Deft Clear Gloss Lacquer. You can get it at any hardware store, and it's what I use on any of the milk painted pieces that I use. And I've tried them all. It's a little more expensive, about a dollar a can more than the cheaper uh, brands you'll find with the OEM brands in the hardware stores, but it's worth every dime of it. And you didn't go through all this trouble to uh, skimp a little bit on your lacquer if you decide you want it. Then again, this is Barn Red. And we're going to go ahead and add a few more things on the web page. Any of the colors can be mixed so you can get a variety of colors. Now, if you had this Barn Red, with a snow white mixed at 50-50, you're going to go down on the color scale and be able to achieve something. So if you're just starting out in milk painting as a crafter and you want to start keeping this around, I would suggest like a barn red, a bayberry green, a marigold yellow, and a, and a can of the uh, snow white. And that will give you all the colors going all the way up and down and you can do an awful lot of things. But the good deep rich colors, you can't beat it. Now again, I painted this thick the way I kind of like to do it to achieve that Victorian or colonial look. If you put more water in it, you're going to water it down, it'll go farther and you get more of a smoother finish. But that's not what we're going for here. I hope this video helps and if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. I always enjoy talking about milk painting. It's one of the items that I, am, I have a particular historical interest in. For now, this is Tom Fredrickson with the Victorian Woodshop. Mm -hmm.